today it's going to be Daniel and I presenting. Yay! Everyone's so excited. Um, so New Year's Eve is, is very interesting and um, Daniel and I were discussing just the I idea of New Year's and the people that created it when it started and its purpose and a lot of times a lot of these holidays are very commercialized and serve for other purposes um, usually um, relating to commercialization and hello capitalism however as with anything in life <clears throat> we can see the positive or the negative um, perspective so we try to look at uh, holidays like this as an opportunity to revisit um, or recalibrate ourselves. But technically speaking, we should be doing that. How often? Every day. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. How many people keep a journal? It's all here. <laughs> That's probably the best place. <laughs> it's kept there. Oh, that's so true. Nothing gets hacked. It's the best way, I would say, one thing to start off your new year is to invest in any type of journal. It could be a gratitude journal. It could be a prayer journal that you uh, pray for others, pray for yourself, um, or anything else that's inspiring and uplifting, any kind of journal that you want. Um, there's a lot of different uh, types of journaling you can do. If you have the app Pinterest, you can go on and get journal prompts um, to know what to write about. Why are we mentioning a journal? It's the best way for us to get to know ourselves and to keep track. But we're going to go a little bit more into this. Um, welcome, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Everyone. Welcome 2020. So, 2020. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. 20, 21 years of SSB? 22? We're going to be 22, isn't it? Because we start like 1998. Wow. It's so now time. we are like adult. We're in adulthood now. <laughs> adult, <laughs> yes. But as we were talking about journaling and self-reflection, we wanted just to kind of open up the floor a little bit for anyone to discuss, um, were you able to accomplish any of the 2019 resolutions slash goals that you had set for yourself? If you remember. If you remember. If you still remember what you... <laughs> or if they were just recent goals, like within the last few months that you've set for yourself or within the last six months. Um, but if you can remember last... December, last early January, um, thinking about what resolutions you were making for yourself. Does anyone remember? <coughs> Any courageous person that wanted to share? What's what that? Is that? You made resolutions. <laughs> <laughs> so if you went through the year and it's still here in the fresh, it's a resolution, isn't it? You made through. Just the fact of being here again, ready to reinitiate the year, it's an accomplishment because it means we didn't quit. You know, uh, despite the problems that we had, we went on resolving those problems and uh, succeeding or not, here we are. Yeah, I think, I think John touched on something very interesting because um, a lot of people didn't make it because they quit their life. And we know that the issue of suicide is something that is increasing more and more. It seems that life has been, life on Earth, at least like um, majority of uh, our planet, major part of our planet has been a little bit easy, isn't it? Like, you know, we don't need to, uh, transportation is much better nowadays, communication, and it seems that people are quitting their life much more than old times when life was not so easy as it is today. And of course, we're not going to go to the detail, but there is other elements that was added. Oh, we didn't pay attention in the past, and now we are more sensitive about it. And we are not strong enough to face the situation and um, try to resolve. So I think that's a good point, the fact that we despite of the um, 
struggles that we we all have. So even the thought, I hope, never cross our mind to quit our life. So that's a good point. So anyone to Paula, welcome. Happy New Year. <laughs> We were just discussing if anyone had set any 2019 resolutions from the previous year, because now we're in 2020, gearing up to hope maybe set new resolutions. So we were asking, did anyone remember last year's resolutions or goals or plans that they had made for themselves? Because you are not allowed, you are not allowed to make any resolution this year if you did accomplish last year. I'm just <laughs> joking. But <laughs> Do you want to say something, Paul? Carry on. No, I think this is a very helpful exercise. It, you know, like you said, it's similar to the review at the end of the day. You review at the end of the year. But I just want to share that last night I went up to New Vision's bookstore in New York just because they do their annual predictions talk, which I find interesting. And when I scanned their talks coming up for January, they have one that the topic is intention or resolution. So that made me stop and think. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And we were just listening to something about that, um, making resolutions and if people really understand what that word actually means. When you resolve to do something in your life, that you make the plan. And I heard a, um, a um, quote, I think it was actually by Dr. Phil, and I, um, it could have been by somebody else, but there's uh, similar quotes of similar people on, on the web, which I'll show in a second. Um, but the difference between um, a dream and a goal are the plans that you make. Because we all can have dreams of wanting to live in some exotic place, or well, most of us came from exotic place, so maybe you don't want to go back there. <laughs> uh, maybe it's something like Europe, or, or maybe this is your dream to live in the US, or maybe you want to have a boat or something really extreme. But you always just think about it. You never actually make the plans and that's what's most important is that I would say yes it's great to make resolutions uh, in January it's great to set intentions for the year um, but it's more important that it, we be serious about it and we don't have to wait till December January it actually and I, I know we've discussed this before and Paula before you came in we were talking about journaling and um, living more uh, intently and purposefully um, and you know uh, like leading a more purposeful, driven life. And for us um, came this quote, that instead of, to try, instead of trying to change your entire life in January, the simpler strategy is to adopt a 12-month plan where you're making constant improvements. Now, one of those ways, one of the... the parts of the dynamic of making improvements is what Paula was saying, being able to evaluate what you're doing. And the easiest way and the most simplest way is journaling. At the end of every day, you review, you review your day via journal. It can be electronic if you're into that. It can be on a computer. Um, but the most easiest way, you can go to the dollar store, pick up a book, and just every day um, set out certain goals to accomplish. Kind of like what Benjamin Franklin did with the 13 virtues, where he tried to work on every single day. And I know a friend of mine gave me this really great uh, journal prompt. She told me that um, I should think about an area of myself that I want to work on. And for instance, she gave me an example for her. She wanted to work on being more open with her friends and loved ones. So I said to her, well, how, how do you go about doing that? She said, well, I choose one person um, per week and I work with that person. Not so much do they know about it, but just me personally, as I'm talking with them, I try to be more present, more uh, mindful, You know, putting away my cell phone when I'm with them, just listening to them, engaging with them, opening up myself, and all these things she was telling me, and she journals about it for about a week. And so we can do things like that. Um, the simplest things, you can think of something that you're just trying to work on in your life, something you'd like to be better at, and Obviously, we need to be um, making constant improvements. We need to evaluate those constant improvements. So we actually have some, what we call kind of like steps to success, if you will. It's kind of based off this quote, but off of um, general ways to achieve certain goals. First of all, don't think that you're gonna achieve everything in one month. 
whether it's January, whether it's February, whether it's March, April, May, or any other month of the year, don't think that you set out a goal and I'm gonna be done in one month and then people get really discouraged. Give yourself a longer timeline and we'll, go, we'll talk about timelines as well. Adopt a 12 month plan. Don't just say, okay, um, in one month or in three months, think about the longevity. Think about long term and where you wanna see yourself. Set goals and the steps to achieve them. So again, we were talking about what is the difference between a dream and a goal or the plans that we make. So you can have beautiful dreams and lots of people have amazing dreams and things that they wanna do, but they never achieve them because they don't make a plan. So this is something we actually highly encourage for people to discuss with um, anyone actually, young people, older people, because a lot of times people, people feel, and I'm gonna read a message later today by Joanna, and people say, oh, I'm too, I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too weak, I'm too sick, I can't learn anything, oh, I can't change, I'm, I'm stuck in my ways, this is how it is. And we put those limitations in our mind, and we end up never really achieving what we dream of achieving. Writing down your goals are so important. Write down your goals and set dates as to when you would like to achieve them by. Set realistic dates. For instance, the easiest thing I know we always talk about is losing weight. Now don't think that in two months you're gonna drop 50 pounds. It's actually not even healthy. So it, there should be a slow, uh, healthy uh, movement to your improvements. Don't have such a high expectation of yourself. Be compassionate with yourself. I don't have my phone, but this is a really great app a friend of mine told me about. It is called Insight Timer. Insight Timer. What's it called? Okay, yes. It's a great, <laughs> it is a great, 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 awesome free meditation app. There's a paid version as well, but the free version is great. And it has all sorts of meditations, um, and uh, like someone reading you positive affirmations. And, but the meditations are great because they have a bunch of what's called loving kindness meditation. And it's about sending loving kindness and compassion to our own self, which we don't do enough of. We really don't. We might listen to a friend going through something difficult and really try to be compassionate towards them. But if you ask yourself, are we that kind to ourself? Are we that understanding to ourselves? We get like angry with ourselves and frustrated with ourselves when we should show ourselves more compassion, just as a sidebar. And number five, your plan slash goals must be backed up by actions and not just words. And we must evaluate them, which I would say would have been uh, number six. You must have a way to evaluate the plan slash goals that you've set, how, where we are at in the steps, in the process. Uh, I'm trying to get closer to my cousin Sarah, or my cousin Lorraine. So what are the steps that you begin to take? Well, I'm gonna call her more often, okay, goal. I'm gonna call her at least once a week. That has a date to it. I'm gonna call her and um, have a slew of questions to ask her um, to get to know her better, to become closer to her. I don't know, it, I know this is apps and smart TV and all that kind of stuff is like uh, maybe new, relatively new in the last decade, I guess. But the app Pinterest is amazing. I truly hate Facebook um, and Instagram and those things because they, they just, I feel like set this unrealistic perspective sometimes. But things like Pinterest, you actually can search for things like positive quotes, journal prompts, um, uh, affirmations, ways to be, great, ways to be grateful, um, and also DIY projects, things to make at home, or how to knit something, or crochet, they have everything you could possibly think of. So if we are lacking in ideas, like well, how to go about certain things, there are plenty of ideas on the internet or apps like Pinterest for us to do, or for us to take away from. So, and if you ever, you know, lack any ideas or like you have a goal in mind, but you're not sure about how to go about it, we're always here. 
to discuss things. We have lots of conversations with lots of people. Um, if you want to run something by us and we can kind of give you some ideas. I know I've ran a lot of ideas by Paula. She's mm -hmm. a great resource. Um, she knows a lot of things. She's a lot of resources. knowledge. Yes. <laughs> she has an inf infinite amount of knowledge. <laughs> You're not old. <laughs> You're not old. <laughs> no. You yes. Just accumulate accumulated uh, knowledge. Uh, knowledge, exactly. Yes. So, okay, so I wanted to make a comment yes, on please. these uh, steps to success. Is that in general, when we, especially like this time in the year, that we uh, think about things that we wanted to improve, you wanted to change, um, the resolutions that we are making, often we, make a, we made a mistake because. In general, instead we set one goal, we set several goals. And then, if we, we should pay attention to those goals and see, as you mentioned, what is the probability that really goal number one will be accomplished. So I think the idea here, besides follow these five steps, is also choose the easiest one first. Because if you choose the one that is very complicated, very difficult, for example, you wanted to lose weight. Let's just take this as an example. You wanted to lose like 10 pounds in one month. That would be like very difficult. Challenge. Exactly. So, and then you start to run like crazy and then you get hurt. And then you have discouraged. So, start to from the simple things. It's like, you know, if you're gonna run a marathon, don't start the first day of training, run three miles. Just run like, just run a little bit, like, I don't know, one mile. And then you, okay, tomorrow, and push yourself. So that's easy, that's kind of a little bit easy when it comes with the, with things that depends on only on nerds. But some of our goals involved others involved a um, complex situations, you know? Because you can be well prepared to fulfill your goal, but host there is the other side. Go to, I don't know, get a degree, for example, or apply for a job and get this kind of promotion. You can do the best that we can, but there is another component in this equation that also we need to count, because it might not happen. You know, so I think putting this in perspective and for this step, I think is great. But so also there is um, our part on this that we need to choose which one we're gonna tackle first. Because I mean, if you really want to reach a thousand mile, you need to start for the first step. And this, the first step, is important because if the first a hundred step you feel good. So you have motivation to go 500 and then 1,000. And then when we less expected, you did 10,000. So I think also we need to work our mind to know how to, to use our <coughs> intellect in this achievement of goal. Because sometimes we have the good intention, we have the intention, but the plan, what is the plan? I think you put something, 12 months. The plan itself is very important. It's very important, you know? So, when, for example, when we look at the Spirit's book, um, what, what, why the book is so rich and so, um, when you start to read, you don't want it to stop? Because it's not because of the answers, it's because of the questions. The question was so well made, like, oh my goodness, this is a good question. So the answer became more, I would say, uh, not easy, but, make more sense, you know what I mean? So it's this kind of thing that I think we need to stop and think how direction I wanted to go to my life. You might ask, Daniel, how do I do this? Well, one of the things that we learn with experience in life is observing. Observing people that achieved that particular goal and see what they did. And nowadays with Google, we can read about. There is so, so many, so much, so many or so much motivationals, talks, books, that has real story of people that has succeeded in that uh, area of life. Relationship, you know, um, personal, um, uh, personal 
gain of personal um, development. <laughs> so it's this kind of thing. So you, nowadays we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We have tons of examples in our society, you know, and we need to recognize that sometimes it's difficult for us and we may even think, okay, but that person was in a better situation than myself. I mean, we can, we can acknowledge that, but um, you know, there is several different examples that we can fit in those examples. And then we can do our part. Nobody said that it's gonna be easy, <laughs> and it's not easy, and I think um, the, the chance that we have every 365 days to um, restart again, and to rethink, and to put in perspective what we want to achieve, is great, it's great, you know? The only thing I also would add to that is that it's great to look at perhaps other people that have achieved certain goals that you wish to achieve, but it's a different thing when we compare ourselves to other people. Compares <clears throat> comparison is death, because two people are clearly going to be on different levels, um, and we're not going to know what that what personal struggles that particular person may have gone through in enduring to reach that particular goal. Um, oftentimes we might look at people that are fit or successful and um, we create a story in our mind and think, well, oh, they had no obstacles or they had no in inner struggles. And most of the time, unless you know that person personally, and even if you know that person on a personal level, you still may not know what were the inner uh, struggles and workings of their mind that they had to go through because it's not necessarily something that everyone is um, open about and talks everybody about. So it's just something for us to think about that it's fine to look at other people, but just you know, don't compare ourselves. Say, well, this person Kind of a motivation. I mean, we right. need to have some motiv external motivation because sometimes the internal motivation is not too strong enough. And then we say, guess what? That person was able to achieve that. So I, I understand that you know, each one has to have their own pathway and their own struggles is not the same because we are different. We are in different level. But I, I think as a motivation, as a start point, I think should be something that if we don't know, this is for people that doesn't know how to start. You know, so maybe you can instead create something that, you know, just reinvent the wheel. And not reinvent the wheel. So one thing that um, personally I learned is with our teachers. You know, there is a lot of things that I achieve because my teachers in school, what they said, what they story that they shared in the class, and we pay attention to that to say, oh my goodness, this is something that I may consider to do. It. So it's just like kind of, they were like the motivator in, in their life. Each one of us has people that we feel motivated to uh, change or to do something. Welcome our friends in the back. Happy New Year. Okay, you sing. Yes. So, okay. go ahead. Question? Yeah, go ahead. Are they here? And maybe we can go through the. At, okay, maybe we can we can do this at the end because we still have some slides mm -hmm. to go yeah, through. Great, thank you. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, up to now, we are talking about um, how in the new year we can accomplish things. And when we search, when we look around, majority of the, the question that people, or the resolution that people, people made, is related to external thing. You know, it's related to losing weight, stop to smoke, or uh, I don't know, get that promotion. Is things that is related to our material life. But then, what happened that every year, either we accomplish those resolutions or we go to the next year making the same resolution. <laughs> this year I need to achieve that promotion, I need to find a new job. And it seems that thing has going on every year. And when we look back, 10, 20 years has passed. And the question is, what we are doing wrong <laughs> not to achieve those resolutions that was made 20 years ago? And in the Spirit's book, question uh, 919, Kardec asked a question. This is in the chapter of, um, I think it's in the moral laws, the third part, I believe. 
But the question is, what is the most effective means for improving ourselves in the life and for resisting the draw of evil? Before we go to the answer. So what is the best way for us to achieve happiness? We, we uh, just look at the question because that's what prevent us to be happy is because our vices the evil here is in the sense that absence of goodness okay so why i don't do good all the time why my life is not a happy life why only trouble struggle happen in my life how is there is there a, a, a effective means effective means that's something that is not going to fail okay and the answer is just one statement. A sage of antiquity has told you, know thyself. Who was the person that said that? It's a Greek philosopher. So to see that knowledge has been in humanity way before Christ, and is still very up to date today. So when they say, when they answer, the Spirit didn't give a answer that said, oh, you need to pray more, you need to work more. We, so that was not the answer. The answer is, know thyself. Self-discovery, isn't it? We need to know ourselves. But do we know ourselves? Maybe what, 10%, 20% of ourselves? So, so how do we if we say, do we know ourselves? How do we identify? What's the proof? How, how can I tell you? How, how can you tell someone that you know yourself? Can you give an example of this? When you go to a different situation, and they will overcome, you know yourself? Okay, let me ask a question here. Is there anyone here that is jealous? Raise your hand. Oh, there is a courageous person here. Does anyone here get angry? Ah, okay. Does anyone here have some kind of selfish? Selfishness? Have some envy? Envy? Okay, if you don't say that you don't feel at least a little bit envy in your life, you're a liar. <laughs> there is another vice. You're not human. <laughs> because the level that we are, we are in the planet of trial and expiation. Which means that we are more uh, toward the um, animal instinct than the angelic level. Okay? So it's not bad to recognize. So when we recognize, when we know ourselves, we need to add not only the qualities that we think we have, because when we add the qualities that we think we have, is the work of the ego. Oh, you know, I'm very smart. I speak like 10 languages. That's the ego. The ego is the, you know, outside. It's not the self. You know, know thyself means know the self. The self means like know all your qualities, but also know all your defects, you know, your vices. So this is a challenge for us. Because there is a situation in our life that if it happens, you don't know how you're going to act. If you don't know how you're going to act, you don't know yourself. If someone comes here with a gun, so you don't know how you're going to act. 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 So it means we don't know ourselves. When we say that I'm not jealous, come on, it means that you don't know yourself. So, you might not know how to identify that sentiment or that feeling. That's telling that we don't know ourselves. Because sometimes we have the feeling, but we don't know how to name it. We don't know how to name it, what kind of sentiment, feeling we have. So, if we don't know how to name it, it means that we don't know ourselves. So, and then, many people say, oh no, I'm not jealous, I'm not envy. I don't have this pride that you are telling me that I have. Ooh, that's a problem. It is a problem, and I'm saying this because this is not from here. It's from here, me, and you, and the whole humanity, because that 
is something that we put in our resolution to accomplish and to do things, but we forgot the fundamental thing that is the essence, our essence as a spirit. And to know ourselves is almost impossible we know ourselves in one lifetime. We come from many reincarnations. And each incarnation or reincarnation that we have, we have a different persona. And if we add this as male and as female, the, is, things can get com complex. So and then we come to this lifetime with a lot of um, uh, traumas that sometimes we even don't know that we have. And we don't have the answer. And we look for the answer and say, why I'm this way? Why I'm that way? Why I react this, this way or that way? There is no, I came from a family, so this is us. We come from families that everything was, was well put together, but now I have a behavior that doesn't, um, doesn't um, match with the way I was raised in that family. Where did this come from? This is a good question. Kiss, you wanted to make some comment on this? I do, actually. Um, I, I like the idea of being um, practical and realistic. So if the high order spirits are telling us that we need to know ourselves, um, get to know ourselves, because what is know thyself? Get to know yourself. So how are, how are we achieving that goal? What are our plans on a daily basis? To uh, What do we do daily to achieve that goal? This is a, not a rhetorical question. I'm asking you guys, what are the ways in which you get to know yourself Daily, weekly, monthly. Paula. The process of meditation is extremely helpful because you really are sitting with your mind. Uh, I think most people now know it doesn't mean stopping your thoughts. That was like a misnomer. But through that simple daily practice, <laughs> and you see your mind and how it triggers and associates associates and you connect it in with your feelings it's amazing to start to get some distance and again it could be 12 months 24 months it doesn't matter because you will get rewards that give you another second or two to step back in real life when you're triggered um, I just went through that with my cat I'm having a power struggle with the boy because he um, well, he was starved, I understand that, so he's always wanting food. And then I had to go into that place of awareness, and I really think it's coming from the meditation discipline, where I caught myself right in the middle. I said, stop, and then this heart of compassion opened. I still needed to set a limit, but boy, if you can switch the energy, that to me was a miracle. That is awesome, Paul. Thank, Thank you. you so much for sharing that. We are definite, um, well, I'll speak for myself because I don't want to speak for Daniel, but um, I think a lot of us are big advocates for meditation. Joanna talks, Joanna DeAngelis, uh, the spirit guide of Givaldo Franco, uh, in most of her writings uh, mentions or um, refers to or somehow um, brings in the idea of meditation, how important it is um, as a daily routine. Again, I'm going to throw out there for those who arrived later because I don't think I, I don't know what, at what point in my talk, there in our talk did I mention this, but there's a great app. It's called Insight Timer and they have one minute meditations. For, so for those who don't know how to meditate or not accustomed to it, you can start with daily one minute meditations. You can go to five minutes, you can go to six minutes, whatever amount you want to go to and it's great. They have a vast array, male voices, female voices and different kinds. So it, how are we working on ourselves to get to know ourselves? Yes, we can just live life, and through that, through our experiences, we get to know ourselves. But if we want to live more intently with purpose, and in the Spirit's book, um, I think we're going to be talking about this, or we, we might be the next question, or it's one of the questions definitely in the Spirit's book, that um, we, our evolution and our happiness depends on us, on how hard we decide to work towards that. So we can move really slowly, or we can move at a, a faster, slightly faster pace. 
So it's really, truly up to us. And I, I can side with Paula in saying it is a magnificent experience to get to know yourself and to have the sensation of coming home for the first time. I can definitely share that as a personal experience just to illustrate what we're talking about here, that um, having had the experience of going through therapy and getting to know, because basically the therapist is mirroring back to you what you're saying, and perhaps it's the first time you ever were cognizant of, wow, I do think like that. Oh, I didn't realize that. It's the most amazing experience, and so is journaling. You might think, oh gosh, it's corny, it it's, um, takes too much time, I don't have time, I have kids, I got dogs, I got cats. I got... You know, there's always a reason not to do something. But every single human being on this earth has only 24 hours in their day. Everyone from Bill Gates to um, my trash man. Everyone has the same amount of hours, same amount of days. Not the same amount of circumstances, but the same amount of possibilities to reach certain goals. Now, we don't all have to have a goal of wanting to live in a uh, mansion or wanting to have a big family. Maybe our goals are just to live out our life with positive intention to help where we can and to spread good where we can. I've been listening a lot to a um, very famous person um, on TV, Dr. Phil McGraw and been listening to him since, watching him since the years of Oprah. And I was listening to a podcast of him and his wife, and they were discussing about their success and how what, what the success they've had throughout their lives. And one interesting thing I heard Dr. Phil say was that him and his wife were reflecting together that way back 20 years ago, or 25 years ago, because they've been married for 43 years, 20, 30 years ago, when they were living in a one-bedroom apartment or even a small home in a very small area and a very basic living, they had very basic cards like a Ford and he had a you know, Ford Taurus or whatnot. And he turned to his wife and said, we were just as happy then as we are now. They didn't need to have this success to be happy. And I truly believe that that is a true measure of real happiness. Because when we feel like, well, I need to have this car, this external thing to be happy, we're misleading ourselves. We're doing ourselves a, a disservice. Because ultimately, all that which we can take with us to the other side, that is what's most important. What lies in our hearts, our emotions, our behaviors, our morality, our integrity, those are the things that we need to be working on. And that's why when we talk about getting to know yourself, that learning self-compassion is as equally important. Because sometimes when you get to know yourself, you're like, man, I'm a crappy person. I'm not as great as I thought I was. Like, this is bad. We need to have more compassion and forgive ourselves. Be kind to ourselves. Be kind to your body. We ingest so many toxic things. We need to be more aware. Drink more water. That's just a sidebar. Anyway. <laughs> and I think, I think um, you, you said something that is very important in this um, know thyself is that often we forget to, uh, or we, we have lack of awareness about our feelings, what I truly fe feel. Or we, sometimes we don't want to acknowledge. And I think another way is to pay attention what I feel or what is my feeling when I'm um, in front of a situation that can be good or bad? How do I feel when I watch a movie, a program? What's going on inside of me? Because sometimes what happens is you are watching a movie and they, a special movie that there is the good guy and the bad guy, and we get upset. By watching a movie, we get upset. And then we say, okay, why we are getting upset? I mean, like, come from Brazil, is huge in Brazil, they're so popular. And, and there is tons of, um, of uh, actors and actresses that they are like <laughs> in the mall when they walk in the mall because they play a bad person and they're so popular. People get angry with the actor because they cannot differentiate the role that that, play, that person plays in the, in the so popular with the, the real person. So what is telling us? <laughs> you know, we need to work on this, you know? 
So what's my feeling when I see my um, um, co-worker be promoted? What, what that little f you know, sentiment that we have? Or when someone is, I don't know, get something that we wanted to have and suddenly, oh, we see someone dressed in the way we would like to be dressed. So this little thing, and I think that's what is a way, a practical way, kissing, that we need to observe ourselves. I think what Paula says over there about the cut, uh, um, cut herself in the middle of that emotion when she was about to make you know, a decision or act, I think that's a good way that we are starting to know ourselves. And let's just a reminder, let, she attributed that to the yeah. meditation To the meditation, yes. Has, yes. Um, and one thing about the meditation, Kirsten, because we have a misconception about meditation. So we think that meditation is like put a candle here and stay like for, I don't know, one hour. I mean, if you wanted to do that, that's okay. But the Dalai Lama, I think it was the Buddha, or Dalai Lama says once that, you know, it's simple, just set yourself for one minute. And next week for five minutes, because for those that do meditation for one hour, they have been doing this for their whole life, yes. And he said, if you don't are able to achieve this in one month, seven years, maybe seven reincarnations, <laughs> we're gonna be able to accomplish that level of meditation. But another thing that I learned about meditation is that there is so many different kinds of meditation. For example, for people that drive a lot, you know, I drive one hour to my work. So sometimes when I'm in my car, I turn the radio off, everything, and just try to f be with myself. I can do a 10, 15 minute meditation, but it's not easy because you have the cars, you need to pay attention, but it's pay attention what going into your mind. You can go crazy in the beginning, but then with time, you feel yourself, and then you, f you know what you feel? You feel those ideas, and even like struggle and problem that you have in your life become so like, not so a big burden in your life. And I, I, think, I think we can, when you're running, like if you run, if you exercise, I mean like it's a meditation, you know? Just, it's a meditation. So it depends how you define meditation. If you are looking for those meditations that the, the Buddhist does for one hour, so maybe that's not the best way to start to do meditation. But is to allow yourself to have some time by yourself and your mind in like mindfulness, like here, right here. Like you guys are here, you guys listen to me. It's not, I hope you're not thinking about dinner yet. This is a meditation, you know, this is a meditation. So, okay, so just wanted yes. to make it. So, the, yeah, let's go to our, our second question oh, from can you, yeah. can you the do that Spirit's question? book. Mm -hmm. That's the question you were mentioning. Isn't it? Could humans always overcome their evil tendencies through their own efforts? The answer, yes. And sometimes with very little effort. What they lack is willpower. How few of you make such an effort, however? So it takes very little effort to make changes. But it also, most importantly, takes willpower. And that's one of the definitive factors why after that, I think, they, I, think I read somewhere recently that say, or there was a joke, someone made that um, by like December 31st, and there was like a million people making so many resolutions and setting goals. Um, but then by January 3rd, most people aren't even thinking about it anymore. But however, I think they say it's a couple months in or a month or two in, um, because one of those things is willpower. And in the book, Happy Life, which we usually talk about or we read from, um, Joanna says, if you, feel you're weak, if you feel your willpower is weak, it's because you have not been exercising it enough. So the, the very act of trying to change ourselves, work on certain things, making the effort daily, is already building the strength in our willpower. And you'll notice this about yourself. Once you're able to achieve something small, you have the confidence and the assurance in yourself that you're able to accomplish other things. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any comments they wanted to share about that? This is now and never. What's your name? 
One thing that I'd like to mention is um, to deal with our difficulties, it's very important to be very honest with ourselves. Because the moment that you are really honest with yourself, you can actually view yourself from a different angle and you can deal with your you know, struggles, your problems uh, in a completely different way. And also when we talk to God, not talking to God to ask him, I want this, I want that. But when you talk to God with your heart, you also can really feel that you are talking to him in a very sincere way. So doing this, you can really know yourself every day a little bit more and have mercy with yourself. But we have to take care that we cannot every single day, okay, I have done this today that was not good. I should have done it in a different way. But we have to kind of keep an eye on ourselves because if I do something wrong and I forgive myself every single day, it's like a game, you know? It's a ping pong. So we have to make sure we are really uh, on the right path to get better, to really become a different person every you know, single day in our lives. Yeah, most definitely. Most Thank definitely. you, Solange. Thank you for Very sharing that. Very good comment. Yeah. We actually wanted to show a video um, by this Can you YouTuber. Uh, turn off the light. I think I have it so open below. We're going to play from the beginning. Uh, what happened? Yes. guess. Yeah, that's okay. They choose to be deaf. It's not breaking news, right? I mean, to choose the eyes is such an easy decision. So it boggles my mind, even though we cherish our eyes, so many people live without having a clear vision. Did you know that there are 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet? You probably did. But did you know that no two of them have the same iris pattern? I checked it out, it's a true fact. Even twins are different. Likewise, you, yes, you, have your own unique vision. At birth, the universe gave you a prescription that's custom-made lenses designed for you and placed in your heart. So do not live your whole life without having contact with that part. You know, life is kind of like that movie Bird Box. You know, with, with, with Sandra Bullock on Netflix, it was big. My point is, a lot of people are afraid to look at their dreams. But unlike the movie, you won't die when you see them. You will finally live. My little brother told me he was afraid of the dark last night. I tucked him in thinking, <laughs> what a plight. Kids are afraid of the dark. Adults afraid of the light. I guess that's life. See, a wise man once said, there are none so blind as those who choose not to see. How many people do you know who were given a vision, given an idea, but chose not to act on it? They got the call, but hit decline on the true purpose of their lives. Maybe this is you, and maybe you were scared. Maybe you needed someone else to confirm it and make it clear. But that's not how the world works, I swear. See, eyes that look are common. Eyes that can truly see are rare. Oh, you want proof? Well, let's play a game. I'm gonna make a statement and then you guess the person's name. You ready? Let's play. He was fired from a newspaper for having no imagination or original ideas. Walt Disney. <laughs> okay, next one. His teacher said he was hopeless and would never be a composer. That's Beethoven. How about this one? Her singing coach said she will never make it as a singer because her voice breaks too much. Lady Gaga. 
See, the critics couldn't see Tyrone Bogues' vision either. When Tyrone was 10 years old, he stopped growing. He was diagnosed with a rare disease that stunted his growth. He spent his whole life at the height he was when he was 10. So how could this boy play in the NBA for 13 seasons? Because he had a vision bigger than his limitations. Everybody told him he would never make it. When asked, how does it feel to be surrounded by men so much bigger than you? He said quite simply and intently, kind of feels like being a dime amongst pennies. Never, I repeat, never let the experts stop your dream. They can't see your heart. Remember, experts built the Titanic, amateurs built the Ark. Scientists say that the bumblebee isn't supposed to fly. They say its, it's puny wings can't hold up its body. They're just not anatomically right. <laughs> well, if bumblebees could speak, they would say, bro, you don't know my life. Last month, I was in the UAE, and what I saw brought tears to me. Only 50 years ago, all they had was sand and dreams, literally. No running water or electricity, but their vision was large. Today, you can eat lunch a half mile in the sky. Every citizen gets an education, and those roads for camels are now highways for cars. You know the old saying, shoot for the moon, and if you miss, you land amongst the stars? Well, in 2020, the Emirates have a space mission shooting to Mars. Ladies and gentlemen, what is your dream? You better own it. Do not let people with possibility blindness, nearsighted ambitions block your vision and give you life glaucoma. There have been over 107 billion people to have lived and died on planet Earth, but there has never been and will never be another you. You have greatness inside of you. You have a gift inside of you. So take that blindfold off now. Rip it up, break it. Life ain't just about making a living. It's about living your making. It is no coincidence that the year approaching is 2020 because I have a funny suspicion that if you work on your self-image and stop squinting at your ambitions, then 2020 won't be your year. It will be your decade of perfect vision. We wanted to share that um, he's a YouTuber, Prince EA. I don't even know how to say his name. <laughs> he <laughs> has like he has five million subscribers. Right. Yeah, he has a lot. Yeah. But he has great motivational videos, great um, messages um, to be spread out there Before in the you world. Move, one thing that mm -hmm. I like in this video is that 2020 is not your year. It's going to be your decade. So if your resolution doesn't work in 2020, so you have 10 years to go, okay? So yeah, not a chance, you have 10 times. Okay, yes. kissing, sorry. Yes. So we also wanted to share uh, a message by Albino Teixeira, which is a spirit. Albino. Albino. Albino Teixeira. Albino Teixeira. Yeah, this was a message psychographed by Chico Francisco mm -hmm. Acandio Xavier. And in this book, Passos da Vida, is not in English, this book I translate from would be like steps of life, I think. Yeah. Um, and it, it's very appropriate for this time in the year because a lot of people may feel that because of their struggles, you know, they're not able to to get their resolution then. So. Or to move on, yeah. So the message is goes like this. What we suffer the most in the world, it is not the difficulty, it is a discouragement to overcome it. It is not the trial. It is the despair in face of suffering. It is not the disease, it's the dread of receiving it. It's not the unfortunate relative, it is the hurt of having it in the family team. It is not failure, it is the stubbornness of not recognizing our own mistakes. It is not ingratitude, 
It is the incapacity to love unselfishly. It is not our own submissive condition. It is the revolt against the superiority of others. It is not our pain. It is our wounded pride. It is not temptation. It is the lust to try its suggestions. It is not the aging of the body. It is the passion for appearances. How easy it is to perceive in the solution of any problem, the worst problem is the burden of afflictions that we create, develop, and sustain against ourselves. So these are just some thoughts for us to think about, and it's all about percep perception and how, how we perceive the world around us and especially within us. So we wanted to end. Um, I still have a, a one message yeah, after that. No, I know. So we're coming to an end, um, I meant to say. Um, but this is another message from Happy Life by Joanna DeAngelis. And this is, a, again, this, if you don't have this book, we do have a new edition out. There's a second edition out. Um, and it's just as good as the first, um, just with some um, updates. But it's a great book to have on you at all times in your car, in your center console, in your coffee table. Um, it's great for, you know, when you're at work and you want to keep it in your, like, desk drawer when you need to sort of pick me up or someone else around you at work might need to pick me up. It's great to have a, a book of short messages that you can just read real quick to uplift you. But in this particular message, Joanna says, in a 24-hour day, reserve a few moments for reflection. The person who proceeds without meditation loses contact with himself. Corralled by the hands of the clock or out in front of them or behind them, he becomes confused and loses his way. A periodic review of goals and actions is indispensable to success. As you reflect, you will review your mistakes and have time to repair them. You can reprogram your tasks and renew yourself more easily. Speak less, sleep a little less, and meditate more. Otherwise, wasted minutes that you use for meditation will be transformed into points of light in your day. These are great tips that she gives us and how important it is, especially when she talks about a periodic review of goals and actions. We talked about this earlier. One way to do that, I'm sure there are other ways that one can uh, review their periodic goals or their goals periodically, interactions periodically. But one great and easy and effective way to do that is journaling or to keep a journal or if you want to call it a diary or just a book you have by your bed to uh, put in books of, you know, to review your day. It's a great way to measure or to evaluate yourself and how you're doing on this journey. Did you have any? No. Okay. So this particular message came through recently. Um, it's a Last psychophonic Monday. message. Mm -hmm. On December 30th, this past Monday, at our uh, mediumistic meeting, and we thought we should share it with everyone. And this is a message from one of the mentors. And it reads, Life is the precious diamond of the soul. Life is continuous. It has a beginning, not an end. We are talking about the eternal life of the spirit. However, when we inhabit lower planets like the planet Earth, it is necessary for us to stop and make time and space to think and meditate, to ponder and evaluate in order to keep moving in life. Without these parentheses in our lives, we will lose track of our own improvement we will be like pebbles that have been kicked on the road with no purpose or sense. Certainly, it is important that all of us unite our thoughts, that we unite our desires and goodwill for the new year that is about to begin. But also let us be grateful for the year that is coming to an end. Life is the precious diamond of the soul. Let us value its depth and let us take advantage of this unique moment in which both planes, the spiritual and the material ones, are more than interconnected in the New Year celebration. Although it seems superficial for so many, the New Year's celebration is also an important milestone 
for spirits due to the movement of the current of positive thoughts emitted by humans. Because during this time of the year, the inhabitants of the planet Earth are more mindful about what they did and about what they want to do in the future. We, the good spirits, are taking advantage of this parenthesis too, to inspire, to infuse strength and courage, to embrace our loved ones and to be joyful and prayerful for the future ahead. For this New Year's Eve, be assured that we will be with you celebrating, praying, and inspiring you towards the next goals for your lives. Our deepest respect and love, SSB Spiritual Team. So this message, although it was a message for the, new, the as mentioned here, the um, new New Year's, new Year's Eve. Uh, so we we wanted also to um, extend for the rest of the year because it's a positive message. I mean, in general, we don't share the message that we receive inside in our mediums meeting because. Most of the time, the message that comes is related to the spirits that will be working that night. It's for that service, the purpose. But at least once or twice in a year, we receive message that is more that we feel that we should share with our community because it's not for us only. It's for everybody. And the one thing, I mean, we can study this message and we have read the message a couple of times. Couple of time. we, we write the message inside. We make some comment. And we wanted to also share here. And one of the things for me, and each one of you can pick something in this message and probably bring home and, and meditate. If you wanted the message, uh, I can send to you by email. Um, so just let me know after. But the second paragraph is, is one of the most important for us, for me at least. Because majority of people in our planet, they don't have time, they don't stop to think they don't stop to meditate, as she, she mentioned. They don't give time to, you know, their family, or it's just all the time in that mode, like think about work, about how, you know what I mean? And these simple things that we have in life, we are not stopping. And then when we crash, when we get sick, so we don't need to get sick, we don't need to crash in life to observe and to give uh, some, um, some of our, like, uh, what he mentioned, like, uh, importance for the life. We don't need to go through this. We don't need to. In fact, we learn that when we come to this incarnation, not to suffering. Although it's part of our evolution, the struggles, but the way we perceive the struggles is not in a suffering or painful way. But that is not our, the way that we learn. So we, we see as a suffering. We have people that through their suffering, they consider a blessed, a blessed because help them to see life different. So let me know if you wanted to have, if you wanted to make any comment on this message, I can open the microphone for you. Uh, if not, uh, I can email you this message or put in the WhatsApp group, or send by email, so, okay? Yeah, I, sh I speak for myself and I'm sure many. Getting this message to be able to reflect on it would be very helpful. And then it takes it, like you said, out of the realm of just New Year's. Um, what it made me think of was something I read in the Unity magazine this morning. And I was unaware of this, but the Dalai Lama has also endorsed it. That there's a practice now around the world at 9 p.m. at night to have one minute of silence. So it may not always work with your lifestyle, but I think having that knowledge, because like we know, there's more power when more than one soul is concentrating on it. So I just thought I'd share that. And the other quote, and I forget who they attributed to, because I'm not much on details. I just like to get the big picture. Um, your attitude controls your altitude. And then one more I got in my meditation group. I'm just doing very quick ones that I'm working on. Ego is edging God out. Oh, that's nice. That's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What I was kissing, what we have. No, just like you, uh, 
um, we're sharing, I think it's, and Paula just happened to mention as well, I think it's a message that we can use throughout the year. It's not just for New Year's. I think it's applicable for, you know, um, just looking at our life in general. Um, but this is the, the end of our talk, and we did want to open up for questions and comments. And it could still be questions or comments mm -hmm. on this message or anything else we discussed. Um, or, you know, if you want to talk about what goals you are planning for yourself or have been planning um, that you are trying to achieve, mm -hmm. maybe you'll inspire somebody else to do the same. You never know. Yeah. We just need uh, five minutes for comment because yeah. then um, because of time. Yes. And then we're going to move to our pass. But this is your time, guys. Any comment? Any? If you want to. So, Aloysio mentioned at the beginning that you said your questions about. What's your hero? So, what's your hero, Luis? You can say that. Uh, Michael Phelps. Although he had what? depression, he overcame. Yeah, that's that is a nice documentary out, out there about Michael Phelps. So you know his, you know about his life. Yeah, it's, it's true inspirational. Yes. Anyone? Our new friends over there. Mari, you wanna say something? <laughs> Chris, Maria. No heroes? You guys don't have heroes? <laughs> you have heroes? One of the things that that message, if you can go back to that message, says that also is important for us is this part here. That, you know, we need to keep in our mind that we have a guardian angel. We have a spirit guide that is looking for us, is waiting to inspire us. You know, I mean, although here this is like, it was not one spirit, but it was in the name of the spiritual team, the spirit that the mentors of this house, for us that come here at least once or two or three times in a week, we need to be open for that. We need to try, at least to try to be open that when the situation becomes very difficult, when we need to make choices, we need to choose something, and we don't know what's the best way, Let's open our mind to the good spirits. To the good spirits, okay? Because sometimes we open our mind, but not so good spirits are gonna come and give idea to us that, wow, that's not the best way to go. But how will you do this? We need also to, you know, to evoke them in our mind, you know? For any situation in your life, you know, sometimes you are invited for high profile meetings that you need to present. So, what you do, I invoke those guys. I say, look, this is be meant to help me. I need to go in before this group of people and give this presentation and please make me not blank. Because the fear of someone that's going front is what? Forget. If you forget what you're gonna say, then that really can, you know, make you more like, you know, the insights go high. high. So, we ask the help for them to protect you. If you go to an interview, a job interview, if you go to a test in school, college, or if you go to apply for a job, anything, evoke their presence. Really, and verbalize, not outside, inside of your car, do your prayer and ask them. If you look for a partner, if you look for someone, you're like, oh my God, my life is so lonely, I need to find someone. Ask them to point, to give a direction. There is nothing wrong for that. Jesus said that, that we should ask. We should knock, but you should wait. And sometimes we ask, we knock, and go away. And when the door open, you are not there. So be, be careful what you ask. But our God and angel, they are there for us. I experienced a guy that was assigned for us to to help us in those moments. They are not here to remove our trials, our pain, but they are here to um, give support, to give consolation, to give a shoulder, to strength, to make you more uh, strong in that situation. Um, the Dr. Bezerra de Menezes, that his name is that dog over there, <coughs> Dr. Bezerra de Menezes said something very interesting. He says that we are not here to remove uh, the pain of our friends or other people, but it's our obligation to minimize, 
to make easier, to, to help the person go to that pain, you know what I mean? So we need to, he has talked about charity, you know, because sometimes people say, oh, you know, should we, you know, give money or give, you know, soup, or, you know, he said, look, it's not up to us to judge. But whatever we can do to minimize the hunger of someone, please let's do it. You know? So we are not in the power or the, in the authority to remove the pain of others. As the same way, we should not expect that the good spirit is going to come here and remove our pain. Even Jesus. But they, we ask for the strength. We ask them to help us to see clear, have like... Vision 2020, as he's mentioned here in the, in the audio. So I think if you don't have any comment, I think probably you wanted to stop here. I wish uh, to your, you and your family, but also to our community, a great year of 2020. Um, we're going to have great program here in this house. Um, speakers, some speakers that came here before, or the new speakers going to come. We are thinking about has a nice program for our uh, year to, to 2020 uh, events we're gonna have this year. This year we're gonna have the Spiritist Magical Congress in Washington D.C. that we, the SSB, also are sponsor and helping in the organization as well. So this is gonna happen in October. We're gonna have a small seminar and forum, Spirits Forum, that we promote do, during the year. So we are continue work with the other Spirit Center here, the Spirit Center of um, um, uh, Germantown, the um, Allan Kardec Spirit Center of Maryland, and a Spirit Society of North Beach. So, um, during the summer, we're going to have our summer, um, summer camp together as Spirit Center working together. So, it's very important that we are not only do things by ourselves, that we also engage in the, with the other Spirit Center in our state in order to strengthen ourselves. Because the moment that we are living now, the transition has been very challenged to, you know, all work of good, you know. So that's it. Uh, thank you, Kirsten. Great presentation. Thank you, everyone. Uh, yes. If you have any question at the end, we will, we will be here to, to answer. But right now, what we want to do, we want to dim the lights. We're going to have our passes for our new friends. So you're going to be invited to come in front. And before that, Kirsten's do like a kind of visualization, meditation, so we can transition from the intellectual to a more um, um, emotional mode. So then we can receive our passes and our blessed water that we have here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.